When it comes to the legions of the Horus Heresy, there are few that are more inspiring and heroic than the Blood Angels. Standing shoulder to shoulder on the walls of terror, defending the Emperor's Palace with their backs truly to the wall, these guys are real heroes, so it's no surprise that they're very popular in the game as well. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is showing you a fantastic way of painting Blood Angels legionaries for the Horus Heresy by Games Workshop, and to do so, we're going to be using a standard Mark VI Power Armor Space Marine for our example. But all the methods and techniques that we're going to show you can be applied to any mark of armor, even Terminator armor. So we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. When it comes to painting the Blood Angels for the Horus Heresy, a key thing to bear in mind is that their feel is very clean and very neat. So we want to bring this across in the miniatures. And this means in the case of models like this, what we're gonna be using is a few more washes than we use on the average Horus Heresy Legionary. So in the case of this miniature, we're actually gonna be using three for particular colors to really emphasize them and give them that clean and neat feeling. And no matter what rank you're going for, even the more opulent ones, this is something to bear in mind. Now, what we're starting out with here is an undercoat of Mechanica Standard Gray for our Legionary, though you can start from just about any colour you want to. You can even start with a bright red if you want to, and if you've got access to one of those, that's a good choice. But in our case, what we're going for is grey, which works really well for loads of different colour schemes, loads of different legions, and also different sorts of blood angels too. What we need to do is start out with what the main colour is going to be before we move on to our first wash. And in the case of the blood angel, that is of course that strong red that forms their main colour. So in this case, the classic one to use is Mephiston Red, and to apply it, what I've got is a monster brush here from the Army Painter. So a nice big brush, good large size for what we're doing here. And with it, as ever, all we've got to do is get some of this paint ready on the palette first of all. So thin down with that little bit of water as usual, making sure it's nice and smooth. So we're looking to get down to about this sort of point here. Then it's just a matter of base coating it across the entire marine. Now details like leather and the bolter and things like that don't matter so much at this point. What we're looking for is just the armor, but don't worry if you happen to catch the details. Just make sure you get an even finish to it. So this will require two thin coats. Just be sure to let the first coat dry completely before you start the second. Once you finish building up that even red on your miniature, the next thing to do is to apply our first wash. And in this case, for a nice bit of shading for that red, what we want is a dark brown wash. So here I'm going to use some Battle Mud Wash. If you want to go for a Citadel paint, you want to use some Agrax Earth Shade here. Whatever you choose, what we're going to do is apply quite a lot of this across the whole model. And normally with Space Marines, what I'd do is carefully apply it into the recesses so as to keep things really clean. But with the case of Horus Heresy miniatures, and especially this particular power armor, because the panels on them are so smooth and generally don't have that much intricate detail on them, it's actually quicker just to wash all over it and then layer it later on to neaten up. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing here. So what we need to do is get the wash ready on the palette. And so here we go, Battle Mud Wash. So you get a good little dollop of this on here. And then to apply it, what you want to do is go for a larger brush. So I'm going to be using a medium shade here from Citadel, but anything roughly this size will do just fine. All we want to do is load up with a generous amount here and then just start applying it all across the miniature. So if I start on the leg down here, what I'm looking to do is to get it moving and start to work it into all the nooks and crannies, but I'm looking to minimize it building up too much on flat panels. So you can see areas like this blob just here, what I'm going to do is just start moving it away, just redistributing it elsewhere around the miniature, working it into those little recesses like around there, but otherwise just aiming for it to be as smooth as possible on the flat areas. Now when you're applying this quantity of wash, you do need to keep an eye on how it will settle because it will tend to run down and collect in recessed areas or parts that are standing out. So for example, if we take a look at the top of the knee just there, it will tend to run and collect in that area quite a bit. So just make sure it's not too thick in there before you move on. But otherwise, it's just a matter of painting it all over. And once you've done so, giving it about 45 minutes to dry. The wash is now completely dry and it has dulled the model down quite a lot, but don't worry about that because we'll neaten that up later on. But before we do so, what we now want to do is carry on with our base coats that again are all going to use some different washes. I'm going to start out with some silver. This is for the mechanical details. So what we're looking at is a nice dark silver for things like vents and that sort of thing. In this case, what I'm going to use is some lead belcher and to apply it, I have here a size one brush from Artis Opus. If you want to use a Citadel brush, you're looking at something like a medium layer. Whichever you prefer with this, all we're looking to do is to start picking these features out. So use the palette to make sure you paint thin as ever, and then it's just a matter of looking for anything that you want to be silver. So as I mentioned, I'm looking for more mechanical details at this stage. So in the case of things like the bolter, I'm looking at details such as around here, things like the barrel around here, all this kind of thing, not worrying about what's going to be black in the future because we've not yet done that. But all the time I am being careful of that red. I'm going to be especially careful when I get close to it. So for example, the crack grenade down here, take your time just as you're going around that area and skirting close to that red armor.
I've finished applying that silver and I'm happy with all the details that have been picked out with it. So now it's time to move on to the next base coat. And for this, what we're looking for is all the black details. And rather than using a pitch black here, what I'm going to use is an off black because as we move on to the black wash, which we're putting over the silver and this color, what it will do is shade this down and give it more depth. So here, what I'm going to use is some Corvus black. And to apply it, I'm going to stick to my size one brush here. But again, from Citadel, you want to go for something like a medium layer brush. Whatever the case is a matter now, I'm just looking for all the details you want to be black and blocking them in. And there are a fair few here. They're all quite small, but they're all scattered all around the miniature. So to begin with, what we're looking at is things like the cases of the weapons. So in the case of the bolter, what we're looking at is this sort of area around here, just being careful of that silver detail beneath it. So we're looking at areas such as along here, as neatly as possible apply to this sort of detail. Now, in addition, what we need to keep an eye out for is any joints in the armor, such as these ones at the back of the legs just in there. Also, we want to look out for any pipes which will be scattered around the miniature, such as the one down the foot right in here. Also, painting any leather too. So we've got a holster around here, so we want to get that as well, so make sure this is all blocked in. And one final detail you can add in the Blood Angels if you want to is to paint some armor panels black. Now, this is entirely optional, but I like it to break things up a little bit, especially if you're doing large squads. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is this shoulder plate Black. But this is entirely optional, and if you decide to do it, don't overdo it. Just one or two panels will be enough. You don't want to take away too much from that red. I finished applying that black as well. You can see the various details I picked out there with that. And with that done, we're now ready for our next wash. And this time what we need is a black wash for a nice clean appearance, especially for that silver. So for this, I'm going to use some Oblivion black wash, but if you want to use a Citadel one, you're looking at something like Nuln Oil. And again, whichever you choose, what you want to go for is the same sort of brush as what you use for base coating these colors, because we just want to keep this wash just on those details. So I'm still using that size one here. So I've got it on the palette already. I'm just going to load up with a bit of this. And then with this smaller brush like this, we can make sure it only goes in these two new colors because we're just looking for the black and the silver. So for example, with the bolter, what I'll do is apply it a short distance away from near that red armor, then start manipulating it around and bringing it up to it because this way you have lots of control so you can keep it just in these details where we want it, but not on that red armor. That second wash is now completely dry too. And so we can move on to our next base coat, which is going to be the gold. And here what we need is a nice warm gold to start out with. So I'm gonna use some Retributor Armor. And then we're ready for our third wash. In this case, what we're looking for is a nice sort of chestnuty color to get a really nice warm opulent feel to the gold. So perfect for Blood Angels. In this case, I'm gonna use some flesh wash, but if you wanna go for Citadel, you're looking at something like Reichland Flesh Shade, just some sort of warm reddish brown is perfect for this. But first of all, we need Retributor Armor for the base coat. And here I'm again gonna use my size one brush. And with this, it's just a matter of looking for details to pick out that stand out as almost decoration and just block them in with this color. Now, in the case of Mark VI Power Armor, the options are a little bit limited, but if you're doing something earlier, something like Mark III, do all the banding and trim, all that sort of thing. But in this case, what I'm looking for, first of all, is to go for that little kind of central detail we got on the chest, hidden away behind the bolter, but this little part just here, this is a good thing to pick out with this color. Also, areas such as the studs and the shoulder plate are great to do in gold as well, so I'm gonna do those. And I'm also gonna do a bit of detail on the backpack too, such as these vents just around here. Aside from this, I'm looking for little clips and things such as on the leather details like the holster. You can see we've got some little clips on here that I'm going to pick out such as around here. So it's all smaller details like this, just very gently picked out. Once you're happy with all those gold details picked out, the next thing to do is to apply flesh wash over the top of each one to give it that really nice warm opulent feel. That wash is now completely dry, and so you can see that warmth that's lent those gold details. And well, with that, we can now move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is to do some layering to clean some things up before we move on to highlighting. The most important thing to do here is to go back to that red armor, because now it is that time to clean things up. So for this, we need some Mephiston red. After that, I'm gonna do a little bit of layering with the gold, and that's just because some of the details I picked out with the gold in this miniature are quite large, flat areas. So I just wanna return that shine to some of those parts before we move on. So for this, we'll go back to Retributor armor. But first of all, what we need is Mephiston Red and to apply it I'm going for the size one brush once again. So in this case what we're looking to do is to retrace our steps from that original first step where we were painting all the armor red but this time it's a much more careful application. And also we can make it thinner than before as well because we're already building on top of some red. So we're looking for a little bit of transparency there, a little bit of translucency in the paint. So that sort of, that sort of consistency there. Because with it thinned down like this what we now have is more control which is important here because we're now looking to avoid recessed details. So for example if we take a look at the arm 
just along here, you can see we've got all these darker panel lines now that are from that wash that we put earlier on. What we're looking for is these flatter areas such as around here. We just want to graze across them like that to make them a brighter red. But when we get to corners, such as where that elbow pad goes to the forearm just here, I'm gonna skip past the recess just a little bit and carry on a short distance from it there like that. Same as that recess panel line, just skip past it and carry on beyond it like that. And this way you can see we're brightening that red armor up and cleaning it up whilst retaining the definition from that wash. Now, once you get the hang of this, it's actually very straightforward because so long as you don't have loads of paint on your brush like I've got here, what you can actually do is use the side of it quite a lot, especially when you get to these recessed panels, such as on here on the shoulder plate, because what we can do is just paint with the side of the brush, just skimming along like that, and this way the bristles can't fall into that recess, meaning that we get all that nice and neatly applied over without filling in any of that recess detail. With that done on the red, you can see now we've got much more vibrancy in that color. And so now we're just gonna do the same thing on the gold areas that are larger. So for example, these vents in the backpack, this is a great place to do it. What we're looking for is retributor armor just applied to the flatter areas once again, carefully avoiding those recesses. And with that layering done to the gold, you can see just what a difference it's made with that really nice shine once again on the backpack and also the studs on the shoulder plate. And with that done, we can now move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is to highlight it. And this is entirely optional. You certainly don't have to do it if you don't want to. And if you don't want to, just skip ahead now to where we paint the eye lenses and apply the transfer to the shoulder plate. But if you want your models to pop on the battlefield, then highlighting is what you need to do. And so we're gonna start out with the main part, which is that red armor. For this, what we need is a lighter red now. So I'm gonna use some Evelson Scarlet for this. And to apply it, I've got is a smaller brush. It's actually a size zero for my Sopus. If you want to go for Citadel, I recommend a small layer here because what we're going to do is some edge highlighting. So a really nice way of highlighting the power armor that gives it that solid feel and helps it pop on the battlefield too. With this paint, what we're looking to do is to, as ever, get some on the palette. And then the trick to doing it is to thin it down correctly. So you want to add some more to it next to it on the palette, drawing in more pigment as you need to, because what we're looking for is the sweet spot where it's smooth and flows well, but not so well that it runs out of control. And it takes a little bit of practice to get the right feel for it, but once you've got the hang of it, you'll certainly know what to look for. And a great way to surmise it is just to try painting lines on your palettes, just having a go at painting lines like this. And if you can keep on going, getting smooth lines that just keep on going and going, then you know you've got it thinned down correctly. And so this looks pretty good to me. I think it just needs a touch more water. And there we go. So the next thing to do is to make sure you don't have too much on your brush because right now it'll go out of control and it'll start blobbing and things. So what we want to do is just remove the excess off and some tissue. So there's not much there, just get a small amount there on the tip of the brush and then you're ready to go. And whilst it doesn't look like there's much there, there's certainly plenty for what we're doing here. Because what we need to do is start looking for all the sharp edges on the armor. And with this sort of power armor, it's actually quite easy to get a lot of it using the side of your brush. So in the shoulder plate, for example, if you approach at about 45 degrees from the flat and just skim along, what you get is that nice bright red line on the sharpest edge of the corner of the shoulder plate just there, just following it around, always making sure I'm comfortable as I apply this because that way you can see I've got that nice highlight running across there. So I'm going to do a second coat just to build it up, make it a little bit stronger, and there we go. So when it comes to this angle, once again, just turn the model so I'm comfortable and follow it all the way along, and this way I can actually highlight the vast majority of the miniature really quickly. Now there are some details that you won't quite be able to do that with because you just can't quite reach it with the side of your brush, and this panel just here in the shoulder plate is a great example of that. In this case, what you'll need to use is a tip of your brush, and to do this, really brace your hands see nice and steady, and start painting downwards in this vertical motion towards yourself, because this way it's very easy just to see what you're doing and get the tip of the brush to follow that edge, and this way you can get a nice neat highlight going along these edges as well. Once you finish edge highlighting all that red power armor, you can see now the shape is much more clearly defined and it helps it pop out nicely. And if you want to, you can take it even further than this. And if you want to do so, you might just want to keep it to elite troops or characters, or you might want to do everything. The choice is yours, but if you want to do this, what you now need is quite a bright orange. I've got some Fire Dragon Bright for this, and to apply it, I'm sticking to the same brush, so still a size one. And this is again going to be edge highlighting, but this time, rather than doing all the edges, instead we're just selectively looking for the ones that pop out more, so the more extreme, sharper corners. And you won't need very much of this and we want to take advantage of the translucency of an orange paint as well so just as ever thin it down with a bit of water I want to bring it down to around about this point here you see so it's quite thin but then with this it's a matter of just getting set up just like we did it for that previous stage and then we're looking for these really fine edges so for example if we look at that shoulder plate once again we're looking at the sharpest corner just down there so it's just a case of approaching just like we did before with the edge of the brush but just skimming it on very gently there like that to build up that stronger orange right in that corner so once again on this side we again just want to very carefully just go in just gently skimming it along like that letting it build up and this way we get that smooth gradient as we get to that sharp corner to give it that fine highlight. 
So now it's just a matter of going around the miniature looking for opportunities to do this. And you don't want to overdo it, so don't need to do loads of things. But any corners that stand out more, such as the top of this little part of the elbow just here and also on the hands, anything like this, just gently pick out those corners. And once that's done, the red power armor is fully highlighted. And so now we can move on to highlighting the next detail, which is going to be the black detail. And for all of this, what we need is a dark gray. So here I'm going to use some Mechanica standard gray. And to apply it, I'm going for that size zero brush once again, because this is again going to be some edge highlighting. So same technique as what we've just been doing for the, for the red when we we're highlighting around all the edges of the panels. But this time it's going to be for all of that black detail, all the different materials that form that black, all of it at the same time. So with the paint thin down as ever, it's just a matter of then looking for those edges. And first of all, for the black armor that we've got, it's just that same edge highlighting. So just like before, look for that corner and gently skim across it to get that sharp highlight going along that edge. But in addition, we need to do the other black details too. So that'll include the leather where once again, we're looking for the edges. So around here, for example, and I'll work away around the different sort of shapes and edges that we've got around there. For the pipes, we're just looking to get a highlight towards the top of them. So we'll look at this sort of area here, just follow along each one there like that. And then for the joints in the armor, you can see we've got these raised up ridges. What we're looking to do is just pick out some of the texture there. So here it's a matter of again, just angling the model so you're nice and comfortable. Look for those raised up details and just carefully just pick out a few of them to help that texture pop out. And there we are with that done. We can now move on to highlighting the metallics. And once again, what we're going to be doing here is edge highlighting with two colors, starting out with some Stormhost silver for all that silver detail. Then for the gold, we're going to use some Liberator gold. But first we need Stormhost silver and to apply it, I'm going to be sticking to the same brush. So still that size zero because it's going to be the same sort of technique. But this time with the metallic paint, which is thinned down in the same sort of way, but we just want to make sure it's really under control here before we start applying it. So just make sure you bring it right down to about this sort of consistency. Then remember, remove the excess of some tissue so you don't have too much on your brush there, so that you've got that fine point. Then it's time to start looking for all the edges and the silver details. So for example, in the bolter down here, where possible, again, use the side of your brush just to skim along to get that sharp highlight, just turning the model as you need to so that you're comfortable. But remember, when you can't quite reach it with the side of the brush, then it's time for the tip of it and just angle so you're nice and comfortable and just gently follow that line all the way down. And once that's done, we can then highlight the gold detail too. And for this, what I've got is some Liberator gold, once again, as an edge highlight. So we're looking for all the corners, but there are a few other little bits that we want to pick out with this too that aren't necessarily corners. The first of those is going to be the top of the nozzles here for the backpack. And in this case, all we're looking to do is just paint a line close to the top of it. So we're looking at this sort of area here, just going across the top, that crest on there, just to help catch the light and finish that off. But also for the studs, because, well, they don't really have any edges here. So instead, what we're looking for is towards the top of them where the light's going to catch. So about this sort of area, just do a dot of this color along there like that. And with that, the gold is highlighted too. And so now we're ready to move on to the final details of the miniature, which are going to be those eye lenses. And for this, what we're going to go for is a simple glowing effect. And we want some green eyes here. So the first thing to do is to paint a line with a pure white. I'm going to use some white star here, but any pure white will do. And once that's done, then we're going to use one of Citadel's contrast paints. Well, I've got is some warp lightning, so a really nice emerald green. I'm going to wash that over the top and the white will show through in the middle, giving the glowing effect. Now to do this, the first thing you need to do is just make sure that the eyes are fairly dark. And if they're a little bit lighter, what we've got in our miniature. Just put a little bit of black wash in there before you do this. But what we need first of all is that white star and a small brush. I'm still going to use my size zero here, but feel free to go for a smaller one if you want to. And with this, what we're aiming to do is just paint a short line right in the middle of each eye lens. So thin the paint down as if you're going to be edge highlighting with it, just making sure you remove the excess paint. So you've got that good point on there. And then what you need to do is just really brace your hands to be as steady as possible. So really make sure you're nice and comfortable like this. So you're not going to be shaking at all. And just carefully go in and just paint that line right right in the middle of each eye. So we're looking at it very gently along here. Once you've got that white on there, you're then ready to move on to warp lightning. And I thin this down with just a little bit of water. And what we're looking to do is to make sure you've got a small amount on your brush and just very carefully move in and just wash it into that recess of the eye. So very gently in there like that to get the appearance of that glowing green. Now, once you've done this, you're ready to apply the transfers to your miniature and then you can base it. And as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing method you go for. But in this case, I'm going to go for an urban rubble base. And 
here we have the completed Blood Angels Legionary ready to fight the death to defend the Emperor's realm. So when it comes to painting Blood Angels, as you've seen, these guys are all about that artisan appearance for their armor. So really take your time, especially when you're doing the highlights and be as neat and precise as possible. Remember those tips that we showed you when we're doing that stage, because once this is done, well, the rest of it is a breeze. So have fun painting your Blood Angels and we'll see you again very soon.